Hey guys, my name is Simsy. How you all doing? Welcome back to some more Napoleon Total War Darth Mod here today on the channel. We're back with episode 9 of my United Kingdom Let's Play. Okay, we have access to our first HMS ships. HMS Victory. I, someone said in the comments in the last episode, I did read it, that I... I caught, I, I caught myself saying HMAS because I'm Australian. Usually when I read that, it's usually the Australian Royal Navy. So I do receive that clarification. And here is our first uh, rate ship of the line. Hopefully we can get <laughs> HMS Victory and Iberia uh, a little bit later on. But yeah, just every single time, I guess when I've seen HMS... It's always been in the Australian context, <laughs> so I did find that quite funny. I did the same thing with, um, uh, when I was playing a UK campaign, I was saying RAF, as in like Royal Air Force. It's I would say RAF, as in Royal Australian Air Force as well, so I do get them mixed up time to time. We've got a new general here as well, at our disposal. We're in a bit of a short piece at the moment. We conquered Spain in the last episode. We will re-go to war with them at some point. And I've made a short little peace treaty with the French as well. Just to build up a bit, we need to get that recruitment back on track. Election results. Oh, we've got a new cabinet by the look of it. Oh wow, that's disappointing. I think our old sort of chaps were quite good, to be honest. They had a lot more buffs. Well than these guys. Okay, so thanks to the new Prime Minister, new government, yeah, my Navy, Army, and Treasury have gone down substantially, particularly the Navy. So, the new generation is in, and they're not as good as the oldies. Okay, so, I've skipped a little bit ahead. We have two full stacks down in Madrid, ready to push over the border into Catalonia to attack Barcelona. And we can push into, I guess this is Navarre, as well, push into uh, Pamplona, and then the Spanish have only got three territories left. We have to push into the Isles there. Back up north, we have three full stacks with Arthur Wellesley, Michael Stoll, and we're probably ready to attack the French. So they did push eastward quite a bit. It's been back and forth. Oh, they're actually going to declare war upon me. <laughs> no way. Um, I was about to take. Declare war, upon, uh, declare war upon Spain at the top of the turn. Um, okay. Well, now we're back at war with the French. Let's see how they sort of move around the map then. And the trade agreement has been cancelled that we slightly had with them. Because if we're at peace, we might as well make a small little profit off it, I guess. Um, another mutiny there. In the Caribbean. Right. Okay. So, Navy-wise, we're quite good. Three full stacks. Should we push into Champagne, or should we go straight for Paris, which has a full stack? There's a couple of other armies hanging around in there. I can't see too many prominent generals. Look, you know what? We'll strike with Arthur Wellesley and see how we go. Um, there's not too much of a garrison in there. It's about a 50-50, and we'll fight this one. If we can take the capital, we might be able to peace out with them, because... The thing is, we're fighting on two fronts, technically. The British army is split between this Belgian region and Spain. So we've really got to focus on one or the other. Okay, so we've just deployed on up here. Unfortunately, it's pouring down with rain in Parry. We've made a strong, long front line. There's not too much of a high ground with our artillery. Like, we can't sit on the high ground further back and just sort of start shelling them. There's a lot of hills and trees and terrible topography in front of me. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to push further towards the outskirts of the city than what I would like. Move my cavalry around as well. But this is going to be an absolute slog because I don't know, stats-wise, if the French or the British have the better melee capacity. Well, we have a, a good old British stiff upper lip <laughs> that we can have a crack at them with. But uh, from what I've experienced, particularly on this difficulty in Darth Mod, when I've gone into hand-to-hand -hand combat, particularly against the French, we haven't done the best. So we're going to have to sort of rifle them and get some long-distance shots against them. We do have a decent amount of artillery for, and this is mostly a garrison force intertwined with some proper field 
land infantry, but there's no commander. We haven't got any Michel Ney. There's no Bernadotte or Napoleon, on, Napoleon inside. So, if we can maybe get rid of their randomly generated general, we might have a better result. Okay, so they've got some Dragoons on the right-hand side. They have put some Caltrops down as well. That should stop us a little bit for our British Dragoons pushing on their right flank. But we just needed to move into a better quality position, make a front line. Um, there's a little bit of high ground there. We might be able to shoot down upon the French. But after our short little piece, we're back at war with the French. It didn't last long. I wanted to focus on the Spanish front, to be honest, in today's video. I wanted to try and take Barcelona and Pamplona. And then if we can finish off the Spanish, we can have a preemptive two-prong attack from Brussels to Paris. And then we can obviously send our armies in the south up to Toulouse, Bordeaux. Um, I don't know what sort of in the south there, Pau, yeah. Sort of push over the Pyrenees. But the French have sort of thrown out that plan. So we've got to strike when the iron is hot. Okay, so we're going to hit their dragoons there. Hopefully try and neutralize them. Because we don't want them to push and jeopardize my front line now moving. Okay, just reforming up here. Let's speed things up slightly. Okay, so we've got to be careful here. Because this is an interesting strategy by the AI, because it actually tends to work half the time. So they're basically throwing away this cavalry unit. And they've made the decision to look, you know what, we're going to fire upon our own troops here. Because there are three cavalry units coming against us. So I've actually done a bit of a folly here. I shouldn't have committed three cavalry units just for their one. Because we've been massively softened up because of it. We'll just try and charge and neutralize that French infantry unit. Just shelling the absolute buggery out of us. Okay. My artillery is still not yet into any position. They're still moving up. I don't know how well they're going to do. Just because this rain is really dampening us. But yeah, I do read the comments, guys. So I do try my best. But yeah, I guess there was a bit of a slip of the tongue. That HMAS thing made me laugh. Because I was like, oh, I do. That's why I'm doing that. <laughs> I'm adding the A when it doesn't need to be there. Um, also guys as well, I did read canister shot, um, you guys, you should use canister shot, it, it really rips through, uh, infantry. I do know that, and I like canister shot, however, uh, mostly on very hard difficulty, I do find it tough to get, like, enough canister shot out for it to be worth without the cannons itself being exposed, because there's a lot of cavalry on these harder difficulties, so... There's a very rare opportunity where we're cavalry safe with the canister shot. Okay, so I've made the decision just to push the front line up a bit here. We've had a bit of shelling back and forth. Uh, most of my cavalry has just been exhausted from that front line. But, yeah, we just need to get closer to them. But this rain isn't really helping. The French have actually intertwined their infantry through the city, which is not a bad strategy. It's just going to be hard for us to push the line, advance, and move further up. We've only got one cavalry unit still left in. But this is make or break. If we don't win this battle here today, we've sort of thrown away a full stack in a precarious situation. Arthur Wellesley will be surrounded in the heart of France. But if we're successful here today, we should be able to essentially circumnavigate Napoleon's eastern push. I wish I could sort of see, and I wonder if there was more events that could come up. Because I want to know what's going on in the East. Because he has been battling it out against Prussians and Austrians. The Austrians have done alright, taking some territory back and forth in Italy. The Prussians uh, pushing into the influential German states. But yeah, Bavaria's popped up there, here and there. Munich, back and forth. It's going to be incredibly interesting to see. Because the thing is... Germany at this point in time, very much on the campaign, is divided. And both the three powers of France, Austria, and Prussia 
are vying for powers. And then you see like these um, units, not units, these, these nations rise and fall and gain independence and become vassals back and forth, <laughs> which is really quite cool. Also, another comment I saw was, why don't you make your videos... Uh, it was about like an hour long-ish. Well, I'll just give you guys a little bit of insight, because I think it's worth talking about that sort of stuff here and there. So, usually when I start a series, I make the first video about an hour, because that's where I make most of my money from this. You guys engage a lot more, a lot more. Sort of the first episode of any series, I don't know why, I still don't know why it is a thing on YouTube, but it gets most of the views than the entire series. You can see that on pretty much everyone's YouTube channel. So, basically, every single episode after that, I try to get to about 20, half an hour these days. Because usually I sit down and record for about an hour, but the rest is usually just, like, nonsense. Like, I can make the videos that long, but do you really, like, basically, this video is probably going to go for, I don't know, about 22 minutes. Maybe 20 or so minutes. But I sat down and recorded and have talked for, like, an hour already. And I sort of just edit out the, the thing is with Total War, Total War is a really interesting game because you spend a lot of time reading the buildings, reading the construction, moving your pieces around the board. I sort of like to only record when the attack plans are going on. If something crucially happens diplomatically, does, like, does it really matter if some random faction declares war upon me at the ends of the earth? Not really. Um, or if just something like, it's it just like irrelevant happens, I don't really show that. Um, but basically, that's why I sort of, like, the thing is, with these older series as well, I think that's what you sort of have to do, because not everyone's going to enjoy it. People will tune out after a couple of episodes, but I, you still want to try and finish and do the campaign. So, it's got a little bit to do with engagement, but it's also more or less about time. Like, some of you may or may not know that I do have two YouTube channels, and I try to upload daily. That's another thing as well. Like, yeah, I could do an hour video, but I'd have to upload every three days, <laughs> which is not good for YouTube, the algorithm, and, and probably you guys, you guys get a bit of a taste in the teas every couple of days with at least something, but yeah, I do play a lot of Football Manager, FIFA on my other channel, and I try to upload around that same time, so I do end up basically putting about an hour of footage out a day, but it's just over multiple channels, but especially for these older games. When new releases happen, I am happy to do longer in, s in videos and show more of it because you guys have probably haven't. Like, if I get an early access game um, that no one hasn't really seen, just wants to try and see as much footage as possible, yeah. But, like, I don't know. Do you really want me to see the replenish and construction at Madrid? <laughs> and whenever some random Italian count wants to trade and negotiate tech with me. Is that really interesting to watch? I don't know. I'm not saying I make the most highbrow or interesting content. It's just, just a time matter. But yeah, that's a little bit inside on that. But yeah, let me know in the comments. Anything. <laughs> Ask me anything. And I'll try and answer it at the best of my ability if I can. We're basically just taking pot shots at the French here now. My cavalry's been depleted. My artillery has really carried the day. But it's still quite close. A little bit back and forth. The French are really recovering. Because my armies are exhausted, pushing, advancing, and they've definitely run more kilometers in this fight than the French. And they've done really well trying to knuckle down. It's still quite close. I wouldn't say it's an overly resounding victory just yet. Because they do these interesting stutter runs, the French. They retreat and then form back and then get some pretty decent volleys against us. We have to stand our ground in most situations. But things are looking very good now. About a 70% in our favor. We should be able to win the day. Also, I read a lot of comments about the AI. Yeah, the Empire and Napoleon AI is just really inconsistent. <laughs> Even on the harder difficulties. It's not the best. Okay, is that the last one? One more unit here. We're just absolutely exhausted. But I, I love this. I do love musket warfare. I'd love to see a Victoria Total War in the future. On the full scale. And if they can fix the AI, that'd be great. I think it's just due to... Maybe, like, some of these maps with, like, the amount of buildings and stuff. 
Like, it even just makes the AI worse, <laughs> to be honest. Because they want to try and defend and hide in between the city streets and stuff. But anyway, victory with Arthur Wesley, Duke of Wellington. And we've taken Paris, which is a massive grab for us. And that is a huge chunk of French territory going over to British occupation. And, oh, Wellesley got injured after that fight. Um, that's not good whatsoever, particularly due to the public unrest. Okay, well, we might be able to sue for peace with the French for a little bit. I don't know if they're going to accept it. They're probably just going to raid most of those core cent uh, sort of central French territories. No, Napoleon is not happy about losing Paris, and there are a fair few forces that could come and intercept Okay, it's probably not a bad idea now. Well, we've done this out of order, haven't we? <laughs> we wanted, I wanted to declare war upon Spain and then the French, but yeah, I guess you got to take the opportunity when you can. So who's at war with Spain, Russia? So if I join, join your war, they like me the most. I just sorted by uh, sort of who likes me the most because I reckon they're going to give us the most money and maybe tech as well. But the Russian Empire will give us a bit of a treasury to put some pressure on the Spanish. They're more than happy to help out. So we'll siege Pamplona. There's a full stack there. We'll send the additional army on in. And we should be able to win this in an auto resolve. Clear victory. Pamplona has now fallen to the United Kingdom. And now there's only one more Spanish territory left on the peninsula. Fantastic. Okay. So, we're back at war with the French. They've actually put a lot of their navy here on this trade node. We're actually dominating most of the trade nodes thanks to our superior fleets holding the Gibraltar Strait and the English Channel. We'll quickly destroy the French fl fleet here. And also, the first episode's been out for a week or so. Now, I did read your comments about the naval battle. You gave me some really good um, suggestions. Really need to focus on the wind. Um, some people were criticizing me. I'm pretty sure I said that was my first ever. They're like, yeah, you're shit at naval <laughs> battles. I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> Didn't I say that? that that was my first? I think that was my first ever naval battle on YouTube as well. I didn't. I got the victory. I didn't think it was too bad in the end. But like um, someone said as well that like giving out attack orders is actually a bad idea. You're actually just better off just navigating, which is a really good piece of advice. And I think I sort of found that throughout. I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. Like navigating is actually easier just clicking, spam clicking, than actually giving out the proper attack order. Well, the French have moved an army here into Brussels with Guillaume Brun. Um, we should be able to intercept this one if we're lucky, and we've gained victory. Okay, well, that's annoying because I probably needed to move those guys to Paris at full strength. Okay, so now we're back at war with the Spanish. They've got a trade note here in Malta. So we'll send Nelson to try and deal with them. The Danes are holding the trade node at Tunisia. Old Carthage. Oh, there they are. I was like, oh, what, what are they doing down there? <laughs> so if we can gain control of the Mediterranean, that'd be bloody brilliant, to be honest. Okay, so Pamplona has fallen. We've got two full stacks over there. I've sent an additional army up from Madrid. And we should be able to push down towards Barcelona. Get stuck into the Catalans. Um, so there's an army here that's going to intercept us on the bridge. I'd like to get my gentleman down there to get some line of sight. But we'll be pushing down against, I don't know, is it Belgrana the right word? We call, like, the Barcelona football team is nicknamed the Belgrana. I don't know what that exactly means. But anyway, we're pushing down to Barca. Uh, well, yeah, we might as well take this to give us some position. Oh, there's nothing inside. We should be able to take it soon. Barcelona. Okay, back up in the north. We're still holding Paris. Unfortunately, Wellesley has gone all the way back to London. He's not going to be available for a couple turns. Man, he got injured in the Siege of Paris, which is annoying. We can fully destroy this army that basically stopped me reinforcing Paris. 
Okay, so that's another army gone. But I don't know who that was. I didn't really recognize him. Still not a prominent French general. I'm happy to make peace, to be honest, if we can. No, they're not accepting. Oh, I thought, because sometimes... Oh, here we go. They're going to accept it. Oh, because of the money. Oh, they went and did it. Yeah, because um, if you want peace with the factions, sometimes it's better to do so right after you take a settlement or right after you destroy an army because they seem to be more inclined. Like, ah, oh, we might be losing this. Or you can trade settlements here and there. Good. We're really going to need that to replenish back on up. We can focus on the Spanish front now. Okay, so Arthur Wellesley's now back in action. But where is he? Yeah, he's back in London. That's annoying. We're going to have to bring him on back. How are we going to get him to Paris, though? That's going to be a really tricky landing. And the people aren't happy in Paris, you'd imagine. I'm actually quite surprised is that we can't actually move from Brussels to Paris. So we're going to have to drop him off in, like, Bordeaux. Okay, we're going to have our last sort of push against the Spanish here. And we're going to be able to rid them from the peninsula. We've had some massive battles against them. We've had a really fun and enjoyable peninsula campaign, I'm not even going to lie. Okay, so... This should be the last of them on the peninsula. Then we have to push to their island territory. <laughs> we can liberate Barcelona. Um, I'm not going to do so. I would much rather just straight up occupy Barca itself. It's a pretty crucial port on the Mediterranean. But now Iberia is fully under British control. Okay, so we've got some ships here that we can use. The Spanish fleet, after the destruction of it at Malta, we should be able to push over with these one or two ships. Like, we can risk a full stack on one of them, I think. There doesn't seem to be too much of a resistance there either. And then, we'll be able to get these armies freed up for a southern assault at the French Empire. We can push into Marseille, Bordeaux, and Toulouse in the south. So we'll get these guys going. We'll disembark eventually. Okay, welcome to the top of the turn. We're ready to push against the last of the Spanish. Um, okay, we will need some additional reinforcements. They're out of moves technically, but they might be able to come on in as reinforcements. Yep. And we'll auto-resolve this one. Victory! Uh, we'll peacefully occupy the island. And if I'm not mistaken, they could have a territory in Italy. I haven't checked. No, that's it. Nation destroyed. The Kingdom of Spain is no more. Once Napoleon's loyal ally has hit the dust. <laughs> Bitten the dust. <laughs> Well, in this timeline, he wasn't able to sort of piss off the Spanish, I guess, and install his brother as king. So, they were French allies through and through this time around. Right, well, it's time to wrap things up. Unfortunately, I have to end episode 9 here. We're going to move all those military forces back. And if the French don't declare war upon me again, which is likely... We have short pieces with them, but they tend to turn into defensive wars. The <laughs> Napoleon seems to only accept peace for his sort of best interest. And then declare a war upon me when I'm weakened. But we'll build up and we'll push for a mass assault on the rest of Paris. Unfortunately, there's been a huge rebellion here. So we've got some French revolutionaries coming up. They look like commie. Commie bastards. So... We're probably going to have to deal with these revolutionaries. Hail the revolution! <laughs> we need to bring them down, as they say that. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm going to play the outro now. Take care. Unfortunately, it's time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Check out my social media links in the description below if you'd like to stay connected with me. Let me know feedback and suggestions for the video. Got to say a huge thank you to my patrons and channel members. 
Victor K, Sebastian C, Jordan K, Caesar L, Brian S, Tal, Liam B, Kyle P, Tom C, and Wyatt P. But thanks, guys. My name is Ben Simsey. Much love from Australia. Goodbye.